Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to part number two uh, for chapter number six. I remember what chapter we're doing. Uh, chapter number six. Uh, we're going to try to finish this chapter out. Um, just to, excuse me, put it uh, uh, to put it to you know to bed, if you will. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look uh, at the ideal gas law. We're going to look at some of the things that we can do with the ideal gas law. Why the ideal gas law is very very important. Um, and then just some of the stuff that, like I said, that we can do with it. Um, we'll, we'll look at a couple more equations. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll solve a problem or two. Um, if we have time, uh, maybe we'll just use this just a lecture to go through it and maybe use a different time to, to actually help you guys work through some problems. Um, and so, so we, we ended up with looking at the different uh, simple gas laws and how we can derive those together to make an ideal gas law. Now, what we have to be aware of, and what's very important, is the units that we are required to use for the ideal gas law. So the pressure has to be in atmospheres. It can't be in torres, can't be in pascals. It has to be in atmospheres. The volume has to be in liters, can't be in milliliters, can't be in you know any of those other ones. It has to be in liters. The moles, obviously moles, can't be anything else. Uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin. This is the, 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 the one that's kind of, we, we have to remember is Kelvin. And to get from Celsius to Kelvin, you have to add 273. So if, let's say you have 25 degrees Celsius, which is common room temperature. That 25 degrees Celsius is equal to 298 Kelvin. That is one that you will probably just keep in mind. Um, just, just keep in mind since a lot of things are done at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, now, the question is, and the question might be, well, what if, right? What if I forget, right? What if I forget what units these have, uh, these, these things have to be in? Um, and I am glad that you guys are asking me that, um, right? Because it is just a lot of memorization. Um, and so here is our ideal gas law again, the same thing that we just saw on the slide before, um, the, the same way that we derived it. And I'm going to, oops, excuse me. I am going to give you guys a tip and a little bit of a hint on how we can know what units that we need. And the units, and, and the tip is, let's go and get rid of all this. We'll do a different color. So you don't know why this time. So the different tip, the tip is looking at this, right? So we talked about pressure, volume, moles, temperature. We didn't really talk about R much. R is that constant that we need. R is called the gas constant. What this gas constant is equal to, and again, you'll be given this constant on an exam, is 0 0.08206, right? But there are units to this gas constant, and we have to remember the units for this, for this equation, otherwise it's not gonna work. So then what if I forget which one? Look to the constant, liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin, right? So it's liters times atmospheres divided by moles times Kelvin, right? And so uh, if we ever forget what units we need for this equation, we just need to look for the constant. And this is, again, we, we talk about themes, we talk about patterns in this class. Here is a pattern. A pattern is always look to the constant when you're given one to find out what units uh, that you need. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to try to solve this equation. This is a practice equation. If you have questions, please come and, and talk to me. But you have a 3.24 liter basketball. Right? And you inflate it to a pressure that's 24.3 PSI. The outside temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And I want you to tell me how many moles, how much gas is needed to inflate a basketball this size to this pressure at this temperature. Okay, I want you guys to walk through filling things out the way they need to be filled out and the units they're filled out. And then I want you to try to use this equation to solve for what we need to solve for. All right, so now, Let's think about densities. 
right? Let's think about density. And densities of a gas. So I do have a question for you. We fill up a balloon with helium and it floats. We, flew up, we fill up a balloon with our own, own air and it doesn't. Why not? So, why it doesn't, oops, let's look at, or actually, let, let, let's take a step back, right? So, we're gonna have to calculate density. How do we do that with this ideal gas law, right? Because I said we can use this. this, this is powerful, this ideal gas law. Well, how in the world would we go about using or calculating density using this ideal gas law? Well, let's go ahead and solve for moles. Or actually, it doesn't really matter solving for volume. Let's go ahead and solve for volume first, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite our ideal gas law up here. So we have PV equals NRT. Let's solve for volume. So we're gonna solve for volume, or sorry, let's solve for pressure. So we're gonna divide both sides by volume. Pressure is equal to NRT over V. Now let's solve for n over v, right? So, so what we're trying to get on both on on one side is, oops, sorry, not multiply, divide. Is we're going to try to get n over v. That's what we're trying to solve for. So, whether you divide by volume and then divide by rt, or you divide by rt and divide by volume, it, it, it's the same thing. The rt cancels over here, and what you're left with is p over rt is equal to N over V. Now let's think about this for a second. N over V, this unit here, or this, this little thing here, right? What are the units? So we have moles and the, vol and, and the volume and the ideal gas law was liter. So we have moles per liter. Moles per liter is known as molar density. Right, molar density. What's just density though, right? Do you remember density? I mean, we have to go all the way back to there. Yeah, density is equal to mass divided by a volume. That's volume, and just reaching really far, right? So mass divided by volume. Right now we have moles divided by volume, which is molar density. But how do you think we will convert this into this? What if we did this? What if we multiply this by grams per mole or moles, right? This is the molecular weight. Well, if we multiply this side by the molecular weight, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this side by the molecular weight. And what happens? The moles will cancel, and we're left with grams per liter. What's that also known as? Density. So we know the density of a gas is equal to the partial pressure, or the pressure of the gas, times the molecular weight, divided by R, which is the gas constant, T. Right, and so what we see is we can calculate density of a gas using our ideal gas law. But why, why do we care, right? Why do we care, right? And so what we can do is we can take, it, it, and the question is, and the question that I posed before we went through this is why does a balloon float? Right, why does a balloon float? And so what we can do, oh yeah, there's more liters per mole. Uh, is if we look at uh, molar volume, so moles per liter, 
right? That's molar density. Molar volume is equal to liters per mole. And if we were to take, and I'll, and I'll show you guys this. If you have one mole of gas, it doesn't matter, any gas, one mole of gas, is going to be equal to 22.4 liters per mole. You just have to trust me on this. So then how in the world can we use that to help us calculate why balloons float? Well, we know the density of a gas, let's say helium, is equal to the molar mass of helium, which was four, or which is four grams per mole, divided by the 22.4 liters per mole. And what we get is the density of 0 0.179 grams per mole. Now, I want you to do the same thing for nitrogen. And I want you to calculate, not necessarily using this, but using this, the density of nitrogen. Right? I want you to calculate the density of nitrogen gas, which is, is most, which is what makes up most of our air that we breathe. And I want you to then answer the question, why do balloons float with helium and not with our own breath? So that's how we can calculate density. So how do we calculate that molar volume of a gas? Right, the, the, the volume that's occupied by one mole of a substrate. I am glad you guys are asking. Even if you didn't ask, I'm gonna ask the question. Right, so, so how do we do that, right? Because I showed you up there on the board that one mole of gas, it doesn't matter what gas, is equal to 22.4 liters. Right, and that's known as the molar volume. And so the molar volume is the volume occupied by one mole of a substance at, and, and, and we need, I need you to highlight this, I need you to circle this, I need you to, to put up stars next to it so that we can remember at what's known as standard temperature and pressure. So any gas at standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, because we need it in Kelvin, and at one atmosphere, it doesn't matter what gas we are talking about, they all equal 22.4 liters. Now, why do I care about this? One, because if I were to ask you, hey, how much, uh, what's the volume of a gas, one mole of a gas at, at STP, then you know it's at 22.4 liters. It's also a way that we can then kind of guess and, and not estimate, but at least check our work, right? Because we want to check our work. And so this is a way that we can check our work. Right, and so we can use the ideal gas law in this way. And if you don't believe me, try to prove me, right? Prove me that, and do the calculation and solve for volume at STP of one mole of gas. And then that way you can look at it and, and, and see it for yourself. But it's at 22.4 liters. We already showed you this on the board, how to derive density uh, from um, what we get from, uh, from the ideal gas law on the board, we, we already talked about that. Uh, the density increases with the molar mass. So obviously the more uh, molar mass the, the, that moles per liter uh, is a, usually a higher dense uh, of a gas. We, we, we can use these relationships. And, and I would like you to think about this and maybe I'll look for a problem or two that we can practice this on. We can use these relationships to calculate the molar mass of an unknown gas, right? If I were to say, hey, what you, you have this gas and here's the, the different things about it, calculate the molar mass for me. We, should, we, we can go to that and use that. What's interesting though is that gases are not usually pure, right? We, we, don't, we, we do see some pure gases, but, but in our atmosphere, right, gases are, are mixed in with each other, right? And so what we can do is use partial pressures to calculate the total pressure, to see the individual pressures, to take a gas in a mixture and then to pull that out and then to, to look at uh, an individual gas. The relationship between partial pressures is known as Dalton's law of partial pressures. Uh, we'll calculate the mole, what's known as the mole fraction, right? The number of moles of a component in a mixture divided by the total number of moles in the solution. 
let me show you, and we'll go ahead and look at the board again, uh, to show you what that looks like. All right, so let's go back here. We're doing a lot of board work. We're doing a lot of equations. There's a lot of equations in this chapter. Um, but they're all derived or they're all based on very, very similar concepts. And so the more practice that we get, the more things that we do, the more that we'll be able to see these concepts in practice uh, and, and the way to use these equations. And so let's say we have a gas with a different mixture, right? So you have pressure of, you, you have gas A, right? We know that pressure is going to equal, I'm just drawing it like this. And then you have pressure of B is equal to the moles of that gas. RT over B, right? And we can, we can go on for as many gases as we have. Well, we know that the total pressure is going to equal the pressure of A plus the pressure of B, so on and so forth, right? Well, then what we can do is that the total pressure, right, and we can just substitute these in here, is equal to the NART over B plus N. B, R, T over D. Well, we know, right, that the gases are at the same temperature, volume, the gas constant doesn't change. And so we know that the P total, let's get a different marker. There we go. That the P total then is going to be N, A plus N, B, dot, 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 however many we have, times R, T over B, right? Because those are the same for all of these gases. Now, we, we talked about mole fractions. We, we talked about this, right? We're looking at the total things. Um, and so we know then that P total is equal to, and let's just say this is N total times, you know, RT over V. Now, what if we're just looking for one of the gases, right? Let's say we're looking for this gas right here. We're looking for the, the pressure of gas A in this mixture. Well, what we can do is we can then take, I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys take a second to write this. What we can then do if we're looking for A is we can just divide by pressure total, right? Because that's going to equal n total rt over v right and so we know that these are going to cancel because these are the same and what we're going to get is the pressure of a divided by the pressure total is going to equal the moles of a divided by the total number of moles in the total mixture of gases what's interesting is this we're going to put an x for a X just means it's a mole fraction, right? Because you have the, the individual, divide, the number of moles of the individual divided by the number of moles of the total mixture is known as the mole fraction. So that's XA. So let's solve, because we want to solve for the pressure. So we multiply both sides by the total pressure and we get individual pressure is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure. And so for an example of this, if we were to look at the pressure of nitrogen in our atmosphere, we know that the, the, the percentage of nitrogen is 78%, right? And so what we want is nitrogen gas. So instead of A, we'll put N2. We know that the, per, the mole fraction, the, the, the percentage of nitrogen in our atmosphere is 78%. And we're going to assume we're at sea level, so it's at one atmosphere. So the partial pressure of nitrogen in our atmosphere is 0 0.78 ATMs, right? And that's what, and that's one of the things, one of the ways that we can solve for uh, this um, using partial pressures, right? If we know the mole fraction, if we know the mole fraction then we can use it and the total pressure to solve for an individual gas's pressure out of a mixture. And so, um, so let's go ahead and we'll look up one uh, interesting thing about this. 
And then what we'll do is then we'll stop with part two and quickly go through part three, which talks about how fast gases move and, and their relationship with each other um, and, and real gases. And so vapor pressure can be used to help determine the amount of gas produced in a reaction. So measuring gases in the reaction is actually kind of difficult and how much gas is mixed off is, is given off. And so what we can do is, is vapor pressure right? To where the total pressure, right? So let's say we're doing zinc and hydrochloric acid. We, we did this in lab, right? And, and H2 gas is given off, but we want to know how much. And so what we do is we collect the gas over water using this contraption, right? The gas will go up here. Well, water naturally vaporizes depending on the temperature and it's temperature dependent. And so here's the pressures for different temperatures with water vaporizes, right? And so what we would need to do is, is, is and then we can measure this pressure. Uh, I'm using a pointer and I don't know if you guys can see it, um, but the pressure that's above the water where our gas and water are mixing, we can measure that. And so if we measure that, we have to realize that our gas is part of water vapor. And so what, all we would have to do is subtract using this table, the pressure of the water from the total pressure, and that will be our pressure uh, of our uh, unknown. And so, um, and so if, if I were to ask you guys to solve a problem like this, I would give you the table, or at least I would give you what the pressure would be. Um, but again, we can use partial pressures to determine a specific pressure, pressure of a gas out of a mixture. One last thing, what else can we do with gases? Uh, we can do stoichiometry on it right? Because we need moles and we can do the mole conversion to another mole and figure out we can do that with a gas. If we know the pressure for volume and temperature of a gas, we can then calculate moles. And so this will end part two. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then we'll talk about how gases move and the way gases behave uh, on part number three.